All right. Hello. Good morning, Stacy Nago. I'm so glad that I can interview you today here on the Butterfly Holistic Nutrition YouTube channel. And I'm super excited uh, about what we're talking about because this is something that um, I have to address often with my clients and the people I talk to. And I like your, your uh, insights and your inputs uh, on this topic. So here we go. Are you ready? I am very excited to talk about a vegan diet and the part that sugar often plays for people. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> How to curb sugar cravings on a vegan diet. That's really what we want to talk about. It's very timely with uh, the holidays coming up and sugar temptations are all around us. Um, all the goodies for Christmas and it's super easy to just kind of indulge and, and grab and go um, while we're at it, right? So yeah. um, let me share share with you before we dive in something that I hear very, very often. So when I uh, get to work with someone who says, oh, I'm on a vegan diet, or I love to eat vegan, and we look at the food diaries, and we look at what they're eating on a regular days, uh, basis, um, what I often find is there are a lot of bread products on there. Um, since it's easy, it's convenient, right? We can grab a sandwich, we can have cake, we can have, you know, bagels, and and in my industry, they're touted as bagel terriers usually um, just because bread and bread products and pizza and these kinds of things seems mm -hmm. to be uh, the main uh, nutrients that they're getting in because they're hungry. And they yeah. keep telling me, you know, like, I'm, I'm so hungry. Like, what can I eat? And, and it, is, it is difficult that when you're running around hungry and you have lots of temptations, you are naturally drawn towards uh, to grab something sugary um, because that's how, how we're wired and that's how we're built. So let's, um, let's shed some light on this, okay? So if we are vegan or we want to go vegan, um, what do we have to watch out for that we're not ending up a bagel terrier? <laughs> Great question. And, you know, it's funny that you bring up bagel terrier because when we're traveling and visiting family, that's often what they offer for breakfast because yes. it's something that, you know, everybody can eat a bagel. Um, so new vegans, I find, or even old vegans who aren't feeling well, you know, a, a lot of people who choose to eat a plant-based diet do so either for environmental reasons Um animal safety reasons or their health. And when people choose to eat a plant-based diet and it's not for their health, but for the environment or for animals, they're often not so aware of how to do it in a way that is safe and provides them with the nutrients they need to be able to su sustain it long-term without disease or negative consequences. So I know a lot of people have the idea that a vegan's going to have, you know, stringy, thin, dry hair, and they're going to be a little sallow and, you know, maybe weak or wispy. Um, and if you do it right, there's nothing further from the truth. Um, my husband, he has been a plant-based diet person for about 27 years. And, you know, that was through college sports and hiking mountains to 20,000 feet. You know, so we're scuba diving down to 120 feet. And we have two sons, they are seven and almost 11, and they've been vegan their whole lives. And they're both athletes, they're both scholars in their class, they're highly energetic, vibrant, um, very healthy children. And so people see us, and they don't, you know, there's no indicators that we eat a plant based diet, and we don't go around wearing shirts that, you know, advertise it. So some people are surprised. And the reason why we thrive with our plant-based diet is because we're very mindful about what we eat. And, you know, we're, I'm not going to go into a lot of details about, you know, here's exactly what you should eat because I don't know you, you know, we're all different, but there are some broad generalizations that will benefit most of you. And number one amongst them is to eat across a broad range of fruits, vegetables, legumes, nuts, and seeds. 
Yes. You know, there's research that has come out recently. It's It's been floating around a bit that you should strive to eat at least 30 different plants per week. Yes. And so we started looking at our diet and we went, gosh, we eat 30 a day because we we try to eat an expanded diet. Um, so if you are eating across a broad range of fruits and vegetables, maybe, you know, when you go shopping, you pick five fruits, you pick 10 vegetables, uh, you pick a couple of whole grains, you pick a bunch of beans and legumes, and you've got a few nuts that you like that aren't, you know, super salty or sweet, you know, ideally, and maybe some seeds, some pumpkin seeds, some chia seeds, some sunflower seeds, you'll eat what you have. So if you have a broad range of fruits and vegetables on hand, those are the things that you're going to eat. Yes. Now, um, what a lot of people do when they start down a vegan path is they go, okay, well, I'm taking out animal products and what's left. Yes, I agree with you. And I think that's the main problem. We're taking out, but we're not putting in. Exactly. And I, in my practice of nearly 30 years with people and Marx's work with people, we find that when you cut out and resist, you know, you, we only trigger the, our rebellious selves. <laughs> it's not very effective long-term. So if you wanna maintain your health long-term, you have to have strategies that support you long-term. So instead of cutting out things, which includes cutting out sugar, what's great to do is to fill up on the things that are good for you, that your body loves and is well nourished by. And if there's room left over, you know, have something sweet that you love and love eating it while you eat it. Just savor it. You know, we're, we're not people who eat a lot of desserts, but if we do eat something, we love it. You know, we're not going to say never have sugar because then we'll just fight ourselves. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we should never deprive ourselves, but we have to know a few things that we're not falling into the trap of actually harming our health with blood sugar irregularities, you know, and, and uh, metabolic diseases that can come yeah. out of it just because we're not doing it right. Right, right. So there are some foods that are really great to move into place when you've taken out um, your meat and your dairy because those are primary sources of protein and certain other nutrients. So what we do in our family is we eat a lot of legumes. We eat a lot of beans, pulses, legumes. I Today, Marcus made the kids sort of an Oriental Asian style lunch and it had edamame in it. Edamame is the green soybean and those are really high in protein. So our kids got some seaweed and some edamame uh, in their lunch today. So they're going to have a nice boost to their protein. And then what did we have last night for dinner? We had black beans. So we made a quesadilla kind of nacho kind of dinner. Um, but those black beans were our core and they are, well, let me back up a little bit. The beans, legumes, pulses, nuts, and seeds, they all have a lot of protein in them. They also have a lot of fiber in them. And the kind of fiber they have is a fiber that feeds your gut bacteria in a way that supports the bacteria that doesn't crave sugar because you can use your willpower to resist sugar. You can keep it out of the house. You can make a promise that you're going to go to the party and not eat a ton of it. You can have a buddy who's going to support you. And all those things are awesome short term if that's what you want to do. But to sustain a diet that doesn't involve eating a lot of sugar, you're going to have to have those longer term strategies. And the longer term strategy really comes from your gut. Uh, because when we eat a lot of sugar, well, whatever we eat really um, feeds our gut bacteria. So our diet and lifestyle determine what constellation of bacteria we have. And we all have millions and millions of gut bacteria. They're in there digesting for us. They're helping to produce hormones. They're supporting or not our immune system. They support our health in just about every way. So if you eat a diet that supports, number one, a diversity of gut bacteria, and number two, an emphasis on the bacteria that support your health, you are going to feel so much better and you, I promise you really will not be craving sugar so much. Yes, wonderful. And you know, those are, those are great strategies and, and they really do work. 
Um, but how would you, like, what would you recommend to someone who's just getting started? Because I can already hear people say, mm -hmm. oh, but I, I don't like these foods or I'm not eating <laughs> those foods or, right. you know, like th there are these, these inner uh, barriers of mm -hmm. like obstacles, um, yeah. like switching the diets because we're yeah. so used to eat what we're eating. And yeah. for most people, it is like five to seven foods um, right. and on repeat, right? Yeah. So how how would we get started if this is something we would like to to move <laughs> towards, but we can't obviously go the mile right away. So yeah. any tips on how to move in that direction to really lose your sugar cravings and not compromising you know, like you wish to, to go vegan and, and uh, eat a healthy plant-based diet. Right. Well, you know, I applaud anyone who chooses to change their diet for reasons that are important to them. Yes. That's not easy to do because our diets are very personal. They come from our family. You know, we most of us eat what our parents ate, who ate, you know, mostly what their parents ate with a little bit of cultural influence in there too. And so changing our diets is, is really quite challenging for a lot of people. And, you know, when you move to a plant-based diet, if you're not accustomed to eating across a broad range of fruits and vegetables, you, I encourage you to have a creative outlook for your diet and be willing to be a bit of an adventurer and to try some new things. In our household, for one, the way that we do it is that we don't serve meals that have a protein, a starch, a vegetable, and a salad. You know, that's that's not how we plate up our food because it's very difficult to get a wide variety of foods um, in that plate. So we tend to make, Marcus calls them, silver bowl meals, where, for instance, uh, one of our favorites is we'll make an unrolled sushi salad. And so it's everything that you would have in a sushi roll, the seaweed wrapper, we crush up, we put the rice in there and we chop up an insane amount of fresh vegetables and the pickled ginger and some of the wasabi and we season it all, we mix it up in a bowl and <clears throat> that goes on our plate. And then we can have side dishes if we want with it, like edamame or you know some miso soup, things like that. Um, but when you put it in one dish, like a casserole or a soup or a stew, um, you're getting, you can put a lot of things in one dish. Then you're not just getting three or four items on your plate. You might be eating 20 or 30 plants, vegetables, nuts, seeds, legumes in that one meal. So that is a number one strategy is to get away from the segmented plate and into the um, finding recipes that have a wide variety of ingredients in them. Um, another super simple one that we love is we'll just cook up some quinoa or millet or, you know, a more high protein, older grain, um, farro, and <clears throat> then we'll cut up a whole bunch of fresh vegetables into little tiny squares, you know, some capsicum, um, bell peppers, maybe cucumbers, uh, maybe some raw onions, you could put zucchini, carrots, some beets, you know, anything that you like, Brussels sprouts, asparagus, green beans, peas, um, and put those in it and then make a great sauce that goes on it. You can just use an Italian salad dressing or, you know, some lemon and a bit of salt, um, whatever sauce you like. We, we love sauces. They can take anything and, and give it a special flavor. But right. that's another way that we get a wide variety, a dish that's just a snap to make. <clears throat> um, but you get a lot of different foods in it. So starting to think differently and instead of plating up in sections, look for some recipes that include a lot of different ingredients in them. Yeah, thank you. That Those are great <laughs> strategies. And I love that you, you are really... Um, creative and strategic about your food food preparation, and mm -hmm. and I I know that you are um, giving courses on um, on teaching people how to create these uh, these meals. Um, yeah. So and I'd like to I'd like to blend in your your homepage where people can find you, but maybe you can uh, tell us a little bit about how these uh, cooking classes that you facilitate how how this works. Well, our business is your vegan family. 
And as I mentioned before, it's myself, my husband, Marcus, and our two children, Nico and Orion. And we, you know, we all feel really great. And I've been an acupuncturist for 30 years. So I've done a lot of food consultations for people. And, you know, Marcus and I just thought, you know, we want to put all of our history, all of our education and everything we want to combine it in one place so we can support people to enjoy a plant-based diet and feel really great. So that's what started your vegan family, just this desire to help people fall in love with plant-based foods and to do it in a smart way so that it can be sustainable for them. So we have a few different programs. We have, um, we've just started Your Vegan Foodie Social Club where we are posting cook with us videos. We have recipes, we have shopping lists. And when the, we have our cook with us videos, it's just us in our tiny little kitchen. We have a very small house um, cooking with you. You know, it's not pre-prepped and edited or in any way. It's us cooking food with you. You can fast forward, pause, whatever you want, but it's just real parents in the kitchen cooking real time because that's what you all are doing. And a lot of people said that they feel lonely in their kitchen. It's not fun, they don't have any company. And they, they were asking us, you know, how can you spice it up? How can you make it more fun to cook these foods? So um, that's been recently launched and we're just building our library and there's a free trial so you can join that. And um, then we have different coaching programs and we're working on a program to help get the foundations of vegan cooking really established for you. So, you know, coming on board and participating in any of that is going to help you. We also have a blog with a lot of recipes, our favorite recipes on it. Um, and then for this audience, for you all, just special for you, we wrote uh, a paper about how to kick that sugar habit. And it includes, you know, some top foods that you can choose that will support the gut biome so that your gut is not screaming, eat sugar, eat sugar. It's screaming, hey, let's have some really healthy food. That takes all the pressure off of your willpower uh, when your gut is asking for the right things. And it also includes a few of our most favorite family recipes uh, that have a lot of different um, foods in them, like our refried black beans with black bean soup. It's a two in one recipe. We always we use our pressure cooker and we make the black beans first. We take some of them out and make refried black beans. And then we leave some of them in the pot, add a bunch of vegetables and some spices and make a delicious black bean soup. Oh, I'm getting hungry just listening to you. <laughs> I should come and visit your house for sure. It sounds amazing. You ha you're so creative. You have so many great ideas. And I love your strategies also um, on Thank how you. to um, transition and how to make it, make sure that you're really healthy and that you're well nourished and support your microbiome and yeah. ultimately your immune system and everything that comes with it. Right. Right. Well, yeah. a another strategy and, um, I will, I will include this in the freebie because it's something that people can get on our website, but I'll, I'll include it for this group, um, is a shopping list. It's a customizable shopping list because we don't, we go to the store and we're used to buying the same things over and over. And if you have a shopping list that lists things that maybe aren't in your usual repertoire, you know, you can pick a few of them to try. And you know, it, it breaks it down also into colors because it's like blue foods, blue purple foods have different nutrients than orange foods. And so if you pick um, a rainbow, if you eat across the rainbow of colors, you're going to be getting a broader spectrum of nutrients and those small phytonutrients and the myriad of nutrients we don't even know or understand what they are or how they work together yet. Yeah. Um, so that shopping list can help you start to choose some foods that maybe you haven't tried, get a little bit adventurous. So I'll include that one too. Oh, that you're, you're very kind. And, you know, I just encourage everyone listening to this to really go check out this link and I'll show it. Uh, this will be your, your freebie to download and, um, mm -hmm encourage you to get creative and look at things. And if, of course, if you want uh, help or you want support, uh, Stacy is there for you for sure to help you get, get started and onto a good uh, vegan start so that you do not need to crave sugar because you are uh, leaving so many nutrients out of your diet, right? That could kind of help you 
curb, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like the nutrient depletions that might yeah. be there in your body. So before we uh, close today, there's one thing I wanted to know. Is there anything um, nutrient wise that we cannot get from a vegan diet that we might or might need to keep an eye on that we get enough of it? And if yes, where do we get it from? Right. There are a few and B12 is the primary nutrient that is more challenging to get when you're only eating plants. Luckily, it is in fortified foods. So if you're eating cereals and some of the nut milks, many of them are fortified with B12. Um, personally, as a family, we do take a multivitamin that has B12 in it. Um, we also take an omega-3 fatty acid. So there are certain fatty acids that are more common in animals and not in plants. And so we do take a DHA um, supplement to help with that. And, you know, really it's eating across a broad range of fruits and vegetables that, that will help you get what you need. And our website has some articles that talk about the nutrients that are harder to get. Some people think that iron is difficult to get. Um, some people think that protein is difficult to get, but we've already talked about that one. Um, vitamin D is something that you need to pay attention to. Zinc and iodine, you know, those are all nutrients that um, most people actually are deficient in other than yeah. the protein, not just people who eat plants. You know, so many people have a poor diet that is nutrient deficient. So if you eat a plant-based diet and you're aware of these nutrients, you are just miles ahead with your health. Uh, and you'll find too our recipes on our website that we've created. We've also done a nutritional analysis of them with just an online nutrient calculator because, you know, we, we think, oh, you know, every as everybody does, oh, I eat so well. I really eat a pretty good diet is what we hear all the time from people. Um, but oftentimes that's not true. So because Marcus and I are scientists, we said, well, let's get the data. Let's find out how healthy is this? And so the, the recipes on our website are recipes we often make. And because we have the nutrients listed at the bottom, we can get a general idea about what we're getting a lot of and what we're getting less of so that we can fine tune and go, oh, you know, well, that's right. You know, this week we ate three of these, but they didn't have a lot of iron in them. So let's, you know, bring in some iron rich foods for this next meal. So we try to look over a week, you know, we're not crazy about monitoring our food and diet, but you know, we did just all have blood tests this year to go, all right, uh, you know, <laughs> let's put the data where our mouth is and we're all doing great. I mean, my iron is higher than it was ever in my life. Um, you know, especially when I was a child and I used to eat meat every day. Yeah. Uh, you know, I grew up that way, but my blood tests are better than ever and our boys as well. Yeah, um, of course, we've trained them very carefully, mindfully, and they eat everything. There's not a fruit, vegetable, nut, bean that they do not love. They're super enthusiastic about everything. And we also help people um, train up their kids. It's hard to change them once the patterns are established, but there are secret ninja parenting tips that we have to help people get some of those vegetables in where their kids or perhaps even partners or themselves wouldn't normally like. I think this is a great point because parents do struggle. They struggle with the nutrition of their kids in general, but mm -hmm. it could be even harder if they want them to get more vegetables and beans and, you know, the good stuff in yeah. because a lot of kids crave sugar, you know, they crave yeah. sugar so much that it's hard for the parents to kind of say, no, let's not eat sugar. Let's eat something else. Right. A lot of parents cave right just because yeah. it's too Easy. daunting <laughs> yes it's it's it you know like you pick your battles as a mom yes. right I have two kids too and sometimes uh -huh. you kind of say you know like I let this one go because I really I don't yeah. want to get into it yeah. but if we keep doing this with nutrition on a regular basis uh -huh. it'll, it'll backfire at some point right yeah. so I think uh, what you offer there, the support for parents is is very needed and um, can really benefit um, the child, of course, but also the family, their nutrition yeah. and, and the overall well-being. So I'm glad that you you are offering that, too, to support parents and, and help them, you know, get the kids away from the cookie bowl. <laughs> well, we all want our kids to thrive. We want the best for them. We just sometimes don't have the energy to. Um, 
follow through with that in every moment. Um, so, you know, with kids and with a great tip for going out to holiday parties or sending your kid to birthday parties or, you know, going anywhere where you're going to be tempted by foods that you'd prefer you and your family don't eat, you know, the best way to do it is to fill up on some high fiber, nutrient dense, high protein foods before you go. Yes. I love that strategy. Then you're not as hungry, right? You're not. And then the gut biome that you're feeding is not the gut biome that is asking for sugar. They're too busy chewing on all this delicious, high fiber, high nutrient food. They're busy. And so um, it's more up to what you want to do rather than your gut directing what you're doing. Yes. You know, I love it. You have given a ton of strategies. And I feel with that, those strategies, everybody can really make it. And uh, there's not much room left for excuses uh, why <laughs> things don't work because we, we've got you covered, you know, like we've got you covered on all accounts. Uh, we're also moms and we know that it can be tricky uh, feeding kids. And we also know that sugar is super tempting, especially when we're stressed, when we didn't have time to prepare food yes. and when it's so easy to get. And again, as Stacy said at the beginning, it's okay to eat some sugar and have some desserts and really savor it and, and uh, um, you know, like uh, be happy when you get it. But it should not be your first go-to at yeah. every meal, at every point in time during the day, because that will that will not feed the right micro microbes in your gut that will not give your body the right signals that will mess with your blood sugar. And um, if you keep doing this for a long time, you know, like things can, can go down south, you know, in terms of your health and uh, nobody wants that. Well, we want everyone to eat a super delicious, satisfying, and as a bonus, nutritious um, diet. You know, there's no reason not to. And, you know, I've got to say just a little note on sugar that I was the dessert cook in my family growing up. So I was always making cookies and cakes. And you know, if they were homemade, we didn't eat you know, a lot of store-bought. But I was making desserts for our lunches for my father and my brothers and I every day. Yes. And I had such intense sugar cravings most of my life. And when I started eating a just a plant-based diet, I don't have sugar cravings. They went away. So instead of them increasing, they decreased. And really it's because of the way we eat. So I hope that, you know, that people, I hope that you will go to our website and look at some of our recipes. You know, we, we tend to eat by um, country cuisine. You know, is it Italian tonight? Are we going Japanese? Are we going Thai? Are we going Central American? You know, both boys were born in Central America. They're made of black beans. <laughs> so, you know, that's also how we look at food. It's an adventure through culture. And a lot of cultures are not so um, animal food focused as we are in the West. So if you're going into Asian cultures, Indian cultures, you're going to, and Mediterranean as well, you're going to find so many recipes that don't rely on animal products. So it can be an incredibly fun adventure to travel through food. And I hope that you do. And if there's anything we can do to support you, we're so happy to. We, it makes our hearts sing to see people thriving on a diet that they love. Well, Stacey, um, what can I say? I wholeheartedly agree with you. And uh, it's been a pleasure speaking with you today about this topic. And I hope that everybody who listened to this will now uh, be super excited to check out that freebie. Uh, go to Stacey's website and see what she has there for you in store on recipes and tips and tricks. And you might even want to join one of her cooking classes because I agree, community is everything. And together, Together, everything is more fun and together we learn and together we move forward yes. so thank you so much Stacy for being here today you are so welcome and it's a team that does it you know I I could not do this on my own it's my husband and it's me and it's our two children and together we encourage and we make food a fun wonderful place to be together so think of it as a team you can all do it <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much, Stacy. And I will put all the links again below this video for you guys to check out later. 
And um, I hope all of you will have a not so sugary Christmas uh, and transition into the new year. And I think Stacy's given you lots of good ideas how to move forward in the new year. All right. Thank you so much, Pamela. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.